Hi, and to welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I have decided to launch a brand new series called How to Look Good with No Code. One of the things I hear all the time is, Christine, I am not confident with CSS. Christine, I don't know how to get things right with CSS. Or Christine, my boss doesn't allow me to use CSS. Now, for all of you who have tried CSS, you know that it's very easy to go overboard. And if you don't have the fundamentals right, everything else will look out of place. So in this series, I will show you the fundamentals of design, how layouts, colors, typography, iconography really matter and really make or break application. And CSS is just an enhancement of that. So if you get the fundamentals wrong, everything else will look wrong. So for the first episode, I have chosen the application that I recently shared on LinkedIn. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so here we are on the application. As you can see, we have an out of the box gallery available to us. I haven't actually made any changes to it at all. And then we have a header at the top. Now this header is quite a common practice and pattern that I have seen in Power Apps that people use. So I thought I'd add that in there. Now, if I was just click on one of the arrows as an example, it will take me to the profile. You can see all of the details in here. Um, you can also see an about me section. This about me section was actually written by Chad GPT just because I'm lazy. And in 2023, we don't write that ourselves. Now, if we were to just quickly go to the apps of the application, you can see that we still have the same layout, but just a few things have changed. So the first thing that I've changed is the header. So we still have a bit of a header, but as you can see, we have a slightly more delicate and lighter color, slightly different hierarchy on the top. We've also updated the gallery a little bit. So we've made it look a lot more modern than it is. And similarly to the before screen, I can select one of the profiles. So I'll just have over, let's say Sam. And that will take me to Sam's profile. As you can see, all of the details are in here. A lot better aligned. We have good kind of layout and hierarchy. We have sectioned the kind of sections that we need to keep separate to, to improve the legibility and readability of the whole screen. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we actually start designing the application or remaking the application, I have put together a branding guideline screen. Now, this is really useful when you're building an application and you're not sure what colors to use. It's always a good idea to specify that from the start. So when you're building an application or thinking of designing an application, always have branding guidelines ready. Now, sometimes when you're building an application, let's say internally or for a customer, they will already have a document that looks like this. So they will have a proper branding guidelines document with the colors that you can use, uh, iconography, typography, and all of that as well. However, sometimes you will be able to just do whatever you want if the customer wants, or you're able to do that internally. So it's a good idea to put something like this together so you can always go back to this and have a look what you've used before. So as you can see, we have five colors in here. We have an accent color, which is going to be the call to action button. So the primary button in application. Then we have the primary color. So this is going to to be the color that comes up the most in application and we also have a secondary color that will be slightly less frequent in application we'll use that for our iconography as well and then we also have the text colors so we have the primary text which is like an off kind of black but not gray color it's a blue color so if i was just quickly go to the fill as you can see we have a slightly of blue kind of color um it's not really good practice to use pure gray it's always best if i was just go to this color as an example it's always good practice to add a little bit of the primary color that you're going to be using so because our accent color is blue if you add a little bit of blue to your color uh the secondary color your text color it instantly spices up the application it looks so much better gray is just gray it's plain and boring. So always play around with colors as well. And then we also have the secondary color, which again, is not black. As you can see, it's off black. Um, so we can use that for secondary descriptions and all of that. Then we also have the font family that we'll be using. So we have Lato, probably my favorite font in the applications. It's a shame that we don't get more flexibility with fonts in Power Apps in general. So Lato is probably the second best we can use. So we are going to use Lato, Lato Light and Lato Black. Now for Lato Light, we are not using the lightest one. If I was to change that to the 
normal it is quite thin so as we zoom out you can see that the text becomes slightly less legible it's not very accessible so by adding some boldness to the text so a bit of font weight you can see that it's becoming more readable but it's still not lato so you can still see the kind of hierarchy and difference between these two shades and these two font weights but we're using the same family and then we have lato black which will be the primary font for all of our other text and then for the iconography we will use emojis so emojis that we can just add to the application with the windows and full stop key and native icons like plus and all of that as well i am not using any svgs for today no css no svgs just plain out of the box features that we can use now before you ask as well for all of the imagery here i have used a website called unsplash so if you've ever done front-end development or any kind of uh, design in general uh, you will be able to just go to unsplash.com and if i was just type in headshot as an example it will come up with headshots of people and i literally just found five that i liked um these are all uh license free so you can use them for commercial projects you can use them for design and all of that they don't come with any license attached at all so you don't have to pay for them um you don't even have to be registered to use this so i totally recommend using this um service as well so let's dive into building the application itself the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to duplicate the screen so we have that kind of previous screen to go off by now as you can see we have that in here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'll probably just remove the whole header from here just because it doesn't make sense to to keep that in here now with the colors normally i would advise that you keep the colors in your variables or a collection of themes on in the on start property but for the purposes of today's demo I will just quickly use these from here and copy them and paste them into the application. So the first thing that we want to do and add to our before screen in here, and I'll just move that to the bottom so it's easy to find. The first thing that we'll do is we want to get that uh, slightly off grayish kind of head at the top. So I'll just go to my branding guidelines and I'll get that button from here, control and C, go into here, pop that onto the top and we'll just move that uh, probably around here. I'll remove the hex value that we have in here. So I'll just take that out. And now we have a bit of a header in reality. We could probably move that slightly further down and make this slightly bigger. Now, the one kind of common misconception is that every application needs to have a header or, or the header needs to be, let's say, 100 pixels, uh, pixels high. It doesn't. It's really up to you what you want to make it. Um, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, recommended or it's not obligatory. Is that a word mandatory uh, that you have a header as well for mobile applications it's not really that important to have a header but if you wanted to use one um, you certainly can this is not exactly a header because all we're doing in here is just saying hi to the person that's accessing the application so I'm just going to add a label onto here and I'll just quickly pop a label and we'll just say hello with a small letter uh, okay with a small letter by that I mean lowercase and I'll just pop another label on the bottom and we'll just say uh, in here. So rather than hard code the value, I will just pop um, Office 365 users and I'll just get my prof, oops, wrong one, my profile, my profile, and then we'll do a uh, given name. Perfect, there we go. And then we will just add the hi at the end. So I'll just pop a Oops, I can't type. There we go. Perfect. I'll just put a yellow hi. Okay, so now I'm going to make this slightly bigger because when I welcome a user to my application, I want them to feel welcome. So using the kind of first name and surname doesn't really work. It doesn't create that, that kind of relationship with a user. Um, by using just the first name, it makes them more personal to the application. It, it creates that connection between the end user and the application so what we're going to do is i'm just going to make this slightly bigger so i'll just make it let's say 45 and then we'll make this maybe uh 36 actually we'll probably make this let's just make this four five let's just make this 40 and make this 32 so it's good practice to always multiply the um text and generally sizes in general by the eight pixels rule so anything multiplied by eight pixels now i want this to be slightly more prominent so i'll make it bolder and I'll change that to, let's say, Lato Black. And then we'll change that to Lato Light, perhaps. And we'll just give it semi-bold 
just to make it a little bit more visible and just like that you automatically have something more uh, i guess more pleasant to the eye than just a dark uh, kind of dark blue colored uh, theme uh, head at the top now the problem with that header that i have is that it's very attention grabbing so as an end user when i first jump into the application that is the first thing that i see and that shouldn't really be the case it should be secondary to uh, to the application okay so now the next thing we will go to edit the gallery so the uh we'll remove the arrow from here and then we'll remove the separate as well and all we have to do in here is we will add the same button that we have in here so i'm just going to do Control and c go to edit and then paste that into here and then i'll just make that slightly smaller i'm going to right click send it to back just so we have that at the back of our content and i'm just going to zoom in and we'll just make sure that it it is the perfect height and the um, width that we need to have in here. Now I'm just going to eyeball this to here. Again, you'd probably want to do, uh, you'll probably not want to eyeball this just to make sure that you have the perfect measurements. Now there is not enough padding between the edge here and the photo. When it's that close for an end user, it starts to feel like you run out of space and you're cramming in too much content. Now, because we want to have the perfect kind of layout in the application, the a good kind of practice is to make sure that you have uh, lines or, or kind of good alignment between different parts of the application. So to do this, the easiest way is to just use the rectangle. So I'm just going to do a Control and C and Control and V to du duplicate that. And I'm just going to make this a slightly darker color. So normally we use like a red one, just so that's not the best red, but we can use that. So what we want to make sure is that the text here starts in the same line as the gallery so if i were to take this out you can see that the text and the gallery look a bit misaligned and that automatically creates a bit of a mess in your application now if i was to just move that onto here so what we effectively want to do now there there is a little bit of padding in the label by default so i'm just going to take that out as well and do this so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the picture starts from this line here so i'm just going to move the picture off there and just automatically like that, you can see that we have a much cleaner layout. So if I just move that onto here, the next thing that we'll do is we'll just add some border radius as well. So I'll probably add, I think we used 10 before. Yes, I'll just add 10 for our border radius. And it will just give slightly smoother edges and just makes it a lot more modern than it already is. Then we'll change the font of the gallery. So I'll just make this Lato Black, perfect. And then London GB will make that Lato light. Now we want to have some hierarchy, so I'll make the text perhaps um, 16. Oops, 16, perfect. And then I'll probably make this 24. Is that a bit too big? Um, okay, well, let's just make this 20. So we'll do it a multiply of 4 instead of 8. Um, okay, and now we want to also add the location icon. So if I was just go to my branding guidelines, and I'll just copy one of these just to preserve the colors. Go into here and we'll pop that into here. <clears throat> Control and V and pop that into there. Now with the icon, you need you want to make sure that the icon starts from the start of the text here. So we want to move this to the left hand side, to the right hand side, sorry, and make sure that the icon starts here. Now, ideally, you want to make sure that there's the same amount of padding between this item and the text here so to do this again we can use simply the rectangle so i can just make this slightly smaller to match the space that we have in here okay and then the text perfect and then all we need to do is just pop that onto here oops slightly there and then the text should ideally start here now sometimes if the space is a bit too big it can look a little bit of out of space so what we can do is we can cut that by two instead so if i was just quickly what width do we have in here 24 so if we were to just make this 12 as an example okay we can just move that onto here and we'll move the text slightly closer to the edge and just like that we have the text now we obviously don't want the thumbs up icon we want the location icon so i'll just type in location there we go and just like that, we have that in here. Now, the icon is still slightly misaligned compared to the text. So we'll move the text slightly lower down and I will just eyeball it. So we'll probably make this 80, um, maybe 84, or maybe 82. 
Okay, perfect. So now just like that, we have the gallery ready. And then the last thing that I want to do is we just want to move this slightly further up. We don't necessarily want the scroll uh, on the right hand side. We'll just make this slightly bigger. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is want to make sure that the space between the edges is exactly the same on both sides. Now for this part, uh, we can still see that the uh, button is actually out. I couldn't see that before. Sorry, my eyes are so bad. So I'll just move that to here. And then we just need to make sure that the padding between the two edges is exactly the same. So I'm just going to make this slightly bigger, move that across here, and then just move that onto here. And if I just quickly bring the button to the top, just to make sure, reorder, bring to front, um, and then we'll send this to back. Okay, we can see that that's slightly overlaying, so I'll just move that to here. Perfect, send that to back, send to back. Oops. Click on the button, send to back, and just like that, if I just take the rectangle out, just like that, we automatically have a much cleaner layout. As you can see, um, again, our uh, hello has disappeared for some reason. I'll just pop the hello onto, onto here, and there we go. So the last thing that we need to do is, I think we had some text there as well to say, find your new team friend, okay? So we'll do that as well. Now, I'll show you hack how you can add or make your text bold within just one single line of text. You can see that that's just one single label that we have in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into here, copy one of these labels. I will probably make the text 12, uh, maybe 16. We'll give it a second, that's perfect. And then we'll just say, um, I'll just say we'll do find your new team friend. Oops, misspell that team friend and then we'll just add the below icon on here there we go so to um make the text bold normally we'd have to have two labels in traditional kind of development we could just use uh the uh, b element so to do that all we have to do is double click on the uh, label in here and select this text do control and b and then do control and b again and then do control and b again and again there we go and then we'll take that out and we'll just make this slightly less bold. And then just like that, you can see that we have two different font weights between the two. I will probably make this lato instead of lato light just because it doesn't appear too thick. There we go. Now, as you can see, we have the same label, but the text are two different font weights as well. Perfect. Now, I could probably move that slightly further down just because right now it's right in the middle between um, the spaces and it kind of, I guess, it ruins the uh, kind of grouping of, of the content. So I'll probably make that slightly lower or maybe slightly further up. Okay, well, let's just quickly move that from here. Let's just do it 265 as an example. Okay, just to kind of uh, use the proximity rule that this actually belongs in here. It doesn't just sit uh, in the middle of, of the space. So just like that, we have the content ready in here. So let's move on to the next screen. So for the next screen, again, I'm just going to uh, do the find the after. Um, that's the after before. There we go. I'll do duplicate. Okay, and I'll just move that to the down so I don't click on the wrong screen all the time. I'll just move that down, move it down, and again, and again. I might speed this up on when I'm editing the video just because that was so slow. Perfect. So. Again, we can use any of the pictures that we have on here. So if you wanted to, let's say, let's just make sure that we've selected the right gallery. So gallery four selected. This was gallery four underscore six. So we'll just make sure that whatever we click on the gallery is the right thing. Let me just test that. Do Sean as an example. Okay, that's worked. Perfect. So now let's move on to editing this screen. So if we just quickly look on the after again, just to remind me because I've got a terrible garbage memory. So as you can see, we have the picture of the person. Then we have a back button. Now the back button for the icon, I'm using the back arrow icon and a separate circle just because the um, icon that comes out of the box that's already got the circle, you can't call it inside that. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then the rest of this is just static stuff that we've already done. The only two new things that we've introduced here, as you can see, is the icons. Now, the icons are just images that I have uploaded to the application just using the media function in here. These are not coded SVGs. These are just uploaded. 
If you type in in Google LinkedIn circle icon and then Twitter circle icon, you'll find one of them. I'll pop the links to both of them in the chat below as well. And that's all I've done here. So again, like I promise, there's no code in here at all. So let's move on to editing our screen. So the first thing that we want to do is again, we'll remove the header. If we click on the profile and we can see all of these details, it's kind of clear to us from the UX perspective that we're looking at additional details of the person. So let's just take that out and let's remove the button as well. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the picture expands to the very top. So if I was just quickly, I think this is in the gallery. There we go. I'll just make sure the gallery goes all the way to the top perfect and i'll just expand it to the bottom so the first thing i want to do is want to just move all of these uh, a bit further down before we do anything perfect so we'll make the picture bigger now for the picture we'll probably make it around here so we want this to be a third now some of the text has just disappeared that's because uh some of the text is dependent on the size of the image that's how the galleries work so we'll fix that in a second now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the content fill of the image is changed to uh, the image position of the image is changed to fill so that it fills the available space perfect now the next thing that we want to do and i'll just quickly zoom out of that for a second perfect the next thing that we want to do is we want to start building the contents that we have in here so if we just quickly move that a bit further down let me just quickly uh, I don't know why my button has disappeared from there. There we go. Let me just extend the template. Sorry, when you look back on this, you'll think, oh my God, Christine, why were you zooming out so much? It's just because the top bar had kind of disappeared. As you can see, it's not, I don't know how to revert that. Okay, I'll just ignore that. Actually, let me just quickly save this. I'll just refresh just because it's it's annoying me and it will annoy you when you're watching it back as well. So just to refresh, reload. And then we'll give it a second. <clears throat> okay so that's now refreshed that actually took 20 minutes to refresh i don't know what happened to power apps then but i had to reboot my computer to get this to work uh just because it just froze on power apps so as you can see we can now see the corn on the top and it, this is just the, the one thing that was bothering me so now we have the picture sorted i'll just probably make this slightly bigger there we go. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to add the title or the name of the person. So we already have that somewhere in here, but like you just said, it, the width is dependent on the width of the picture. Uh, so we'll just make that 500. And then the title of the uh, thing, I think it was here. I'll just click on width. There we go. And I'll just make that 500 for the time being. Okay, let me just move that. Perfect. Right, so now we can start kind of positioning this properly. So the first thing I want to do is want to make sure that the uh, image or sorry, the text starts in the same position that we started the uh, gallery in. So if I was just going to here, you remember that we had the rectangle. So I'll add another rectangle in here again, control and V. And I think we had 24 pixels between the two, um, 40 pixels. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to quickly uh, make that, let's just say we'll make it red there we go again a very ugly shade of red so i'm just going to do control and v and go into here and do control and v again and we want to make sure that the text doesn't start any closer to the edge than this so i'll just make that slightly bigger there we go and now we can start positioning the text so i'll remove the uh, text alignment and make it left we don't have any padding which is good so now we can move that slightly closer to the edge perfect make it uh let's just say we'll change the font size to maybe 56 okay and i'll just make that um that's probably a bit too big i'll just make it 48 mm, still too big 40 i think that's still a bit too big let's just make it 32 okay that's that's a lot better now we'll change the font to lato black perfect okay so now we can start adding the things so we had the location just underneath the the name now don't forget that we also had the location uh icon so i'm just going to go into here copy the icon from here go back to my screen and pop that into here and that's probably at it at the top perfect let me just zoom in a little bit so we want to make sure that the, again the icon starts at the edge here and then the text that we have the same amount of text or padding uh, between 
uh, the two or half of that again i'm just going to eyeball it for the time being but you know exactly what i um, mean then we'll move on to the uh, next section so i think the next section had the job title if i was just going to go into here again and we'll go to after <clears throat> yep so we have the name and the location and then we have the job title now uh, just underneath the name and the location you can see that we have the uh, rectangles now to do this again we'll just use the rectangle i don't like using the horizontal line in the application just because there's no way to control the width uh, if you want to kind of expand that to the entire width of the screen so i'm going to go back to my application and then add a rectangle rectangle pop that onto here i'll give it a second there we go and this is what we'll use to make the line so for the line again we want to make sure that the line um starts uh between where there's uh same padding between the image and the text here and uh, between here and the next text so to do this we'll probably make move the text slightly further up just to align that slightly better and i'll just move that up here move this up here okay and again i'm just going to eyeball the text again uh, let me just zoom in let me just zoom in a little bit more and i'll eyeball, eyeball the text uh, that's a bit too much of padding let me just move that slightly further to let's say um 82 as an example just moving that width was it yeah this is up here i'm just 75 maybe okay that's a bit better and we'll change the font as well so we'll make it a lot of light and we can make that um semi old perfect okay so now for the uh space between the text like i said actually matter of fact i'll probably move this slightly further down so let me just move the text here okay perfect and then i'll quickly get the rectangle from here let me just move that up and then here and then we'll just make that this way so i'll just do this make sure that it touches the text perfect and then we'll just do control and v and then here so we want to make sure that the line starts right uh here under the text so it doesn't start here and it doesn't start here the line should start right here so we have enough padding between here and the line and then enough padding between the image and the text so i'm just going to make a line from here the height of the line will just be one and then we'll change the color so for the color we'll go back to our branding and we'll just go to branding guidelines and I'll use the gray color that we have in here. You could use the lighter gray as well. And actually, we might as well just use this one. So I'll copy that, go back to my screen. There we go. And then just change the color of this to that text value. There we go. So you can see that it's a very subtle line. Actually, it's a little bit light. Uh, I think I used the other color uh, in the original uh, set. Let me just get that instead. Copy that. Go into here perfect and then i'll just click on the line wherever i can see it's perfect and i'll just make that slightly bigger okay so now i can uh, move the rectangle a bit further down so you can see that that's created a nice layout because we have the same amount of space between the line here and this here so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to move the job title right into here so uh again we'll move the pad uh, the padding from the left make sure this is aligned properly to the line here again if you're not sure always just do this and then that way we know that it's perfectly aligned there and then we'll copy the line that we have in here control and c control and v and then we want to move that down so again the same principle applies i'm just going to make the rectangle slightly smaller and again you can always eyeball it but if you want the perfect amount of pixels between the two it's always good practice to use the rectangle so i'll just pop that into here okay i appalled it quite well actually i'm not going to lie perfect so now we've done that we'll change the font size in a second uh, actually we forgot to move the icon as well let me just move that up here and then i'll just move the text slightly to the left and let me just fix that to 78 i think it was perfect okay so then we have the uh introduction message so for the introduction message i'll just move the interest first for the introduction message the same thing applies so i'm just going to use this from here and then pop that into here so our introduction text should start around here perfect okay i think that's a little bit off let me just quickly get the x from here 
80 43 sorry i can't see as you can see 43 perfect so um if you ever wanted to make this slightly easier for you you could assign the x axis to uh, let's say point to this title as an example so you could change let's say the x axis from here position and assign it to title one dot x as an example to make sure that they always stay in the same line as well that's another thing that you can use but for our kind of case we're just uh, manually uh, changing that so the next thing that we'll do is we'll just quickly change the font of this one as well i'll probably make this latter black maybe that's a bit too dark um let's just make it latto and then bolt Okay, we are losing a bit of text, so I'll just move that up here. Is that a bit too big? We could probably make this slightly smaller, so we'll just make it 16. There we go, that's a bit better. So then we'll change the text. So again, for text, we'll make it lato light. Uh, we'll change the font to 16, and then we'll make that semi-bold. There we go. Going to here. Again, it's quite a short description, so it looks a little bit more out of place than we had um before and then we'll add the interest now for the interest normally one of the things that i have seen this is a multiple choice column so if i was to go to sharepoint you will see that this is a multi-select column um, that we have normally i see people use the concat uh function and just put them after a comma again there's nothing wrong with it but i do prefer a slightly different method so to do this uh, and again just to quickly show you if i was to go to my original data set if i was to go to edit data you will see that the um, interest is a multi-select column. So uh, when you use a multi-select column, uh, by default, you're creating a collection, so an array of values. So uh, they, the, my favorite way to present this is rather than using a drop-down or rather than using a um, list box, as an example, rather than concatenating, I literally just use another gallery. So I'm just going to add nest a gallery within this gallery. So let me just quickly select um, this gallery here and I'll click on the uh, pencil I'll go into here and then we'll just add a horizontal gallery I'm just going to add the blank one so we don't have any images in there and then the next thing that we need to do is we'll just make that slightly smaller and there we go and then all we have to do in here is just do this item and then we'll just choose interest and by default, because it's an array of records, it will automatically work for us. So you automatically separate them into separate records in that gallery. So the next thing that we need to do is we just need to add a label. So I'm just going to pop a text label, pop that into here, as you can see. And now we just need to assign a text value. So we'll just do this item dot value. There we go. And as you can see, we have that in here. So the next thing that I like to do, and actually we'll probably change that slightly, is rather than using a... Um, label i will just use a button so i'm just going to go back to my branding screen again and i'm just find the branding screen get that from here and then we'll pop that into the gallery the reason why is because i want to have a little bit of border radius which we can't or can't obviously do with the um label so i'm just going to take that out and then pop that into here and then we'll change the text from the hex value to this this item dot value <clears throat> pop that into here and as you can see, just like that, we automatically have these galleries. Now, uh, the reason why I wanted to do this is, as you can see, we have this kind of pale effect. We can see them separated. We see that very often in um, mobile development and generally website development, just to make it more readable and more interesting than just like a concatenated value in here. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to just make sure that the template is slightly less wide because we have way too much space between the both of them. And we want to make sure that the button again aligns to the corners here. So we can use a rectangle again that we have in here, pop that onto here, make it slightly bigger, pop that onto here, and then we'll just make sure that that aligns. Um, let me just move that slightly to the right and then we'll just move that here. We want that to be a lot smaller than it already is as well. We don't necessarily need that to be that big. And then we'll just make it, just to make sure that all of the categories will fit. I think that should be fine. I'll remove the space that we have between the both of them. So I'm just going to make the padding slightly less. And actually, I'll just move that here and I'll make the gallery fit in here. Just because we have way too much padding between the both of them, we want them to look like they are connected to each other. Perfect. That's a lot better. And then we'll just change the font uh, family. We already have Lato Light. We'll probably make this bold rather than semi-bold just to accentuate it a bit more. And we'll change the font size to perhaps um, maybe 10. If that's not too small. 
um, I think that might be a bit too small for my mobile. We'll make that again 12. Yes, I'm about that will be much better. And actually, we could probably make it even 16. Okay. Oh, I'm changing the border radius. That's why I can't see anything. <laughs> you can tell my eyesight is really bad. Okay. We'll make this 16 again. And then we'll make this 12. Okay, perfect. Right, so I'll just remove the interest from here. And then the last thing that we need to do is just move that further up a little bit more. Pop that onto here. And then we just need to add the two uh, images. So the two social media icons. So I'm just going to go to my media, pop that onto here. And then pop that onto here as well. Perfect. <clears throat> Zoom down. And then just make them uh, the same size probably. So we'll probably make them... So just go to width. I just make them forty-five by forty-five. That should probably be enough, not too big. Wherever that's gone, where has that just gone? Oh, we've lost it. We've lost it. Where is it gone? Um, image, image. Where is it gone? Right. Let me just bring that to front. Bring it to front. Oh, that's why you can see that my eyesight is really bad. I promise I will wear glasses to my next video because this is just getting ridiculous now. Perfect. Perfect. You know, you spend way too much in front of your, uh, way too much time in front of your screen when you start seeing like 360p instead of 4k. Um, right. I think that's slightly too big. I'll probably make this 35 by 35. And again, I miss this one up. Perfect. And then 35 by 35. Perfect. And now the last thing I want to do is we just want to make sure that there's enough space between all of these. Now, before we do that, we want to make sure that the larger description will fit, uh, even if we have the text in here. So I'm just going to go into um, here, and if we just choose, let's say, we forgot to add the button on the top, and I can see that we've forgotten to change the um, image position, which I'll fix in a second. So I'm just going to press on, let's say, Adam, and I want to make sure that uh, Adam's description fits in here. Okay, so with the description, we could probably move it a bit further down as well if we wanted to. Um, but actually, I'll just move the gallery a bit further up and then I'll just move this further up and then we'll just make sure that they start at the left hand side here and then left hand side here. And I think that's still a bit too much space. Now, again, don't forget that this might have longer text. So we don't necessarily want to bring that too close to the edge as well, um, just because we'll then have overlapping text. And for the text here, we can probably make this slightly smaller. Um, We'll just make it was it 16 we'll just make it 14 mm, okay we'll just we'll leave it at, at that um then i'm just wondering let me just move that out is it a bit too much um no i think that should be that should be fine we have the line i think we actually don't have the perfect line uh, in here yet let's just quickly move that a bit further. Now the problem with the gallery is that the gallery edge doesn't necessarily align to the end here. If I just go to here, if we just quickly <clears throat> move the gallery perhaps a couple of pixels, if we just quickly make that 40 instead of 43. Okay, let me just quickly have a look. No, still a couple more pixels. So we'll just make it, let's say 37 as an example. And hopefully that will bring it perfect okay so now we'll just move that to 43 43 and then 43 oops sorry that should be 43 uh we can make that 86 so a double of that 86 just to make sure there's section space perfect okay so now the last thing that we need is as well there was a chat button at the top so we can pretend that we are going to chat to the person so i'm just going to go back to my uh branding guidelines and for that we'll use the primary color finally Pop that into here, <clears throat> pop the button into here, and then move that onto, onto there. I'll just pop chat. Perfect. Okay, now for the text, we'll probably make that lato so it's slightly more thick than it is right now. Let's just wait. <clears throat> okay, and then we can probably remove the size of the button slightly, but because it's the primary button, you don't want this to be too small. You want to make sure there's enough padding between the edges as well. And then the last thing we want to make sure is that the uh, space between the two, as you can see, 
is perfect so we have that perfectly in here now for the line as well I want to make sure that the text is aligned I can see right now that the text is misaligned so I'll just get my rectangle again get that into here pop that into here and then just make that slightly bigger and then we'll just go into here now I want the text to align to the button here so I'm just gonna move the button slightly further up and just like oops just like that as you can see we have the button perfectly aligned um the button is slightly too tall i would say so i'll probably make that slightly smaller just to align with the lines that we have in here we can probably make that slightly smaller even um let's just quickly make that smaller okay now that doesn't look like a button anymore so i'll probably make that slightly bigger um let's just align that again properly we'll just move that um okay let's just move that slightly further down so we'll just make it um Forty as an example. Oops, not for forty. Forty. Okay, and I'll just move that further down. And I'll just move that. Um, actually, is that going to be fine? Is a no? It's still a little bit too tall, so I'll just make that thirty-seven, maybe. Okay, and then we'll just move that further down. So I'll move it down the y axis. I can't see what it says on there anyway, right? Four. Let's just make it 500 as an example. Let me just make this zoom in a little bit more because I really can't see what it says. Okay, and then I'll just bring that in. There we go. Perfect. So just to make sure that we have that alignment again, that was a lot of effort for, for that. So just like that, we have a really clean layout. As you can see, it looks so much cleaner than what we had in here. It looks, you know exactly what you need to focus on. So your eye is automatically drawn into the text that's more highlighted and, and larger text or, or more enhanced and it just it just looks clean now the last thing that we need to do there's a couple of things as well so we need to change the image position of this gallery so i'm just going to change that to uh, fill just to make sure that they fill the edges here and then the last thing was the colors so we just need to assign the the color to this the text so as you can see you can probably hear Alexa in the background hopefully you can't but this if you can sorry name. as you know already she's my personal assistant for everything so I'm just going to get the color of the text so this is our primary text color I'm just gonna get that this from here oh. and then pop that onto here so I'll use this color for this text in here and I have a feeling that we already have this assigned uh, to this label just because I used that in the before screen as well let's just go into here yes we do and same for this one. Let me just check this text. Uh, so if we go to title and then go into here. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So we have that assigned. Go into the um, after as well. Before. There we go. There we go. So we need to change this color to the kind of of blue. Perfect. So change again. My eyesight is so bad today. Um, don't think I copied the right color, did I? Um, blending guidelines. No, I did. Okay, perfect. And we'll go into here. Uh, we can probably make this text that color as well because it's quite inform important information. There we go. And then just go back to blending guidelines, get the uh, color from here, go back to the after here, and then just change the color of the text. And then go custom, go into here same for this one okay perfect and same for this one as well custom perfect okay now the last thing that you we could potentially do is we could probably change the color of this to the icon color we don't necessarily have to do the icons don't necessarily have to be the same color as the text and again this is slightly misaligned again i have no idea what i did there but i'm just going to move that uh, to let's say 548 perhaps Five forty six. Okay, perfect. So we don't necessarily have to. If you wanted to, you can have that uh, gray color. So I'm just going to copy um, that from here, and you could make it that gray color again. But because it's text that we want to read, um, it does become slightly less visible as well. So just be mindful of accessibility there. But here we go. Just like that, we have that finished. And the last thing is just add the button at the top. So for the button, the back button, I'm just going to pop a button. And actually, rather than just add a random button, I'm just going to copy that from the branding guidelines. Get this one from here, Control and C, go back before, and then pop that onto 
here give it a second okay so we'll just make it smaller so we'll make it um 40 by 40 put away this will be 45 just to make that perfectly circle um that didn't work what did i mess up there we go 40 okay and then we'll just remove the text and all we need to do is just add an icon at the top there so just pop icon icon um actually we'll just type in arrow arrow left there we go and then we'll just zoom in a little bit more just to make sure that's aligned perfectly go to this size okay let me just make this slightly smaller there we go now because the icon will be clickable we want to make sure that that's visible uh, so we'll make that white and then we'll just add a hover effect for the um for the fill so we'll just say rgba let's just say well i uh, use one of the colors that we already have so we'll probably make it um let's just make this color so i'll just copy that from here custom copy that i'm going to here just to give a little bit of indication oops i copied the hex value sorry um right what was the color in here 188 192 196 okay let this is a test of my main memory 182 192 196 i think it was okay so just to make sure that when we hover over oops i got the wrong thing it should be hover color there we go just change that to here and just to make sure that when we hover as you can see we have that kind of hover effect there so that's it for the application as you can see it's very simple it took a little bit longer than it normally would just because i wanted to explain to you the decisions why we made um that we made here but again as you can see i haven't used a single line of css not a single line of um svg or any kind of code just out of the box features that you can use to really make your applications more beautiful and that brings us to the end of this episode don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video i have a lot of content coming in 2023 and i will hopefully see you in the next video bye now